I'm busting makes me feel good, boys. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Yeah. It is that glorious time of the month here on the Harsh Language Podcast. Make Marvin Watch Day, baby. Yes, sir. Episode 85. And we're making Marvin Damn, Watch Ghostbusters, the original. Focus up here. Yep. We thought it would be uh, pertinent since this weekend was the release of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'll be talking about that a little bit, boys. I don't know about you, Dusty, but I will. Yeah. Um, I feel like we got a lot to cover today. I don't know. This just seems like... I remember like not too long ago during the strike, we had fucking nothing to talk about. We were struggling. Now I feel like there's just a ton of fucking shit to talk about. I got shows piling up that I'm getting anxiety over. It's, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. crazy out here, so let's get into this. What do you guys say? Let's do it. What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. How was the weekend, boys? It was good. Yeah. Um, yep. Good. Uh, I didn't do it. much as far as like, well, I went to like a birthday party and that was cool. I got drunk. So oh. That was fun. Nice. Um, nice. <laughs> As far as stuff I watched, I watched the first episode of Silo. Um, I'm I'm enjoying that. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, yeah I, I think the premise is really good. Um, it's like Wait, it's kind of like a mystery. That's not a second season. This is still the first season. First, first season, yeah. You just never watched. Yeah, it. the second season should probably come out pretty soon, actually. Yeah. Okay. First episode of that. I um, can't remember the last time I got drunk. <laughs> I also watched. Uh, X Men ninety seven, the first two episodes, as I'm sure you guys both did. I have not actually. Yep. You got me beat. What? Oh wow. That's I watched crazy. I watched like half of the first episode and I was getting distracted by something else and then I was gonna come back to it and then I just never did yet. Oh uh, shit. Damn. But it looked good. Damn. My friend spoiled shit to me, so I kind of know what's going on, but not really. So but you guys can talk about it. I don't really care. Did you like it? Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I will say about it later after, you know, whatever disappointed that they did not, in fact, start the episode with last week on the X-Men. Yeah. Previously on previously on the X-Men. They fucked. They fucked us. I see the disappointment all over Dusty's face. I knew it the second he took the camera. (laughs) Yeah. I, yeah. Go ahead. I guess I I wasn't affected by that because I I said in the last episode, I didn't watch the original, but I've been reading the comics, so I have a little bit of Con- a little bit more context to just X Men as a yeah. whole, I guess. And in other words, you didn't cry there, so. through the entire intro the way I did. No, not okay. at all. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> it's it's a fucking bop though. It's it's a great intro. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> great. One of the stipulations for actually doing the show is getting the uh, original song, yeah. getting the so, rights to it. I guess before we go into it, Dusty, what did you, what did you do this weekend? And you too, Dan. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot. I mean, I just got back from the movie theater. So. Ah, you did see. Oh it. shit! What yeah. did you see? Yeah, I did. Ghostbusters, uh, Marvin. Ghostbusters. Oh, Frozen Empire. <sighs> fucking guys, get them out of uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, nice. that shit. Didn't the do reviews a whole lot weren't else. looking great. On no, that. well, just, just silence yourself. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll get into it. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> I had a decent weekend. Didn't do anything. Saw Ghostbusters earlier today. I got home like an hour or two ago. I, I I was gonna watch the first three, like I said last episode. I didn't get around to it, so I actually watched Frozen Empire. I mean, I've seen the movie so many fucking times, like, I know them like the back of my hand. So, I didn't really feel like I had to, but I went to see Frozen Empire and then immediately watched the first one for today's episode of the podcast. So I got to yep. watch, Did a, I did a backwards back-to-back viewing. Nice. Uh, and the reason I didn't watch X Men was because, like I said, I, I started it, was getting sidetracked. I, I, I had started watching it like during the day, and I just kept getting like work emails and calls and stuff. I was just like, fuck this, I'm gonna come back to it. Sure. Uh, and then I never did. Uh, I've been going to bed like way earlier than I'm used to. Yep. Recently. So, like, the night is usually my like watch stuff time. Um, so I've only been, because I've been going to bed earlier, I don't have the opportunity to really like just binge watch a bunch of shit that I have on the back burner like I used to do. Uh, so instead of watching 
X-Men this weekend. I ended up catching up on the last two episodes of uh, Resident Alien, which is the sci-fi show that I've talked about before. Dusty and I are fans of it. Um, you're not yeah. watching this season yet, right, Dusty? No, uh, but I got my lady started on it. We were rewatching it from the start. She's never oh, okay. seen it, so... It's a good season. It. This is season three. So it yeah. seems a little bit like they're starting to... Sorry, I'm, while I'm talking, I'm dealing with my tea bag. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are... It seems like after this season, this might be like the second to last season, if I had to guess. Winding it down. They haven't really said anything. I just don't quite know where the plot could go from here. Like, it's as as does happen with shows, you know, like the story tends to escalate and it gets to a point where it's like, well, all right, well, okay. You know, we I use Breaking Bad as an example almost always, but like it's a similar thing. It's like, the, the plot just escalates and escalates. It's like, where are you going to go from here at this point? So, <laughs> yep. I don't know. We'll like see. the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're in like space now and shit and doing crazy stuff. Driving cars in space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I, I'm really enjoying that show. What's his name? Alan Tudyk is one of the funniest people I think alive. He's hilarious. He's good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, decent weekend. That's all I watched, though. Um, yes. So, what do you want to say about X Men, Marvin? Because I got a little bit more time to spend on Ghostbusters, I think, than you might have on X Men. Oh yeah. Um, well, I guess just watching it. It's, how long has it been since the original? The original was ninety what? Eighty eighty four. Ninety seven was supposed to be the next season. Right. It ended. No, I'm in saying, like, you're talking about X Men, right? Yeah. Yeah. The like Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When did the original stop? Yeah, like, ninety one to ninety six were the 96. seasons. So that's why yeah. this is X Men ninety seven because it's supposed to take place the next year. Right. I guess I can only ask what took them so long to decide to make this just sitting on sitting on gold and they're just um, it just took so long. I wouldn't say they're sitting on gold. Well they were well, they weren't sitting on gold until the MCU came around. Mm. Um Well yeah, this was the first Marvel Studios, I think, actual product. Yeah. Um, but then Fox had the X-Men, so I don't know how that mm. whole <clears throat> deal worked out. I think that's I a large part of it is that they couldn't, similar to the way Sony owns like Spider Man, yeah, or or the use of Spider Man Paramount has Hulk, yeah. the use of these characters in movies, television, video games, whatever. Same thing with the X Men. So I don't know if that's why, but I think a large part of it is due to the fact that like, I mean, the MCU's been now ten longer than ten years old, so. I would guess it's a lot, it's con contractual, but it was a very popular show back then. Like for people my age and, you know, Dusty's a little mm -hmm. bit older than me. It's like an integral part of my childhood. And I know all my friends were like, if they were at, like, a lot of people weren't comic book fans growing up. They were X-Men fans because of the show and same as Spider-Man because the Spider-Man cartoon was probably just po as popular the, as the X-Men one. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, that's why, fair. um, yeah. but props to them. Cause from what I saw, like, the animation looks exactly the same. Like the the art style looks exactly the same. Like cartoons don't really look like this anymore. Um, one thing True. that I even forgot about was that a lot of like the background elements are just stills. Right. You don't get a lot of that in animation anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember watching the old He Man VHS tapes. There's a lot of stills. Yeah. <laughs> the the only other animated series from back then that I could think of that was as that was more popular than the X-Men is probably Batman, the animated series, mm -hmm. which many mm -hmm. people consider like the, the Batman, like content to watch. Like if you don't know Batman, watch the animated series. Right. Um, yeah. They both had similar runs. Yeah. That was WB though, back even back then. So it was like, yep. even back then, like there was the warring, uh, <laughs> companies but that's funny yeah so you enjoyed the two episodes then yeah it was great i mean cool. there was a lot in the second episode um i don't really want to spoil it really honestly i mean do they catch you up with it. where it left off mm, not no. really right it kind of just i mean a little bit they talk about professor x is, you know dying and stuff mm -hmm. but that's it's like a it. news clip in the beginning that like I saw. they normally do. Yeah, but that's which, about it. Which is actually cool because it's almost like mm -hmm. you I feel like normally you'd get like a fuck ton of exposition because if they're making it for like quote unquote new audiences, 
But the fact that they didn't do that tells me like this is for a very specific audience, and that's like <laughs> me, really. Yeah. Like you know what happened. We don't got to get into it. Yeah. It's funny too because so they fuck put you, Marvin. the animated <laughs> like the original stuff, the ninety one to ninety six. They it's only been up on Disney Plus for like a month. <laughs> Right. So you basically really only had a month to catch, catch up <laughs> catch on yeah. seven kind of years episode. before yeah. you cut into this one. You know, I mean, Ed, I feel like it's, sorry, it's, it's one of those ahead. it's one of those things though, like I don't feel like I need to know that much about X Men if I know the basics. No, no. Like if yeah. I know the dynamics between Magneto and Charles and I know like the little mm-hmm. fucking uh like fucking love triangles between like Rogue and Magneto and um, Gambit and then like Gene and uh, Cyclops and Wolverine. Like, Wolverine. Yeah, if you know like just the, the, the kind of like little stuff there, like yeah. you don't have to know a lot. That's like the interplay of like people just being together in a group. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like yeah. intermingling. Like, the real important dynamic is Charles and, and Magneto. Yeah, I, exactly. As Dusty and I like argued about a week or two ago, like theirs isn't their relationship is integral to the entire thing because yeah they are on opposite ends of the spectrum of like existence that's why magneto is such like a compelling character like again he wasn't always written this way i get it but he has largely Mm -hmm. become it's almost like you know there's two people fighting for their rights but one of them is the more extremist approach and the other one is like no we could do we can work together with humanity and magneto's like nah fuck humanity like we gave them their chance like yeah, yeah. where the advanced beings. So it's actually cool because it raises like moral questions too. It's like if you if you see mutants as what they are, <laughs> right? A mutation. Yeah. They are an evolutionary advantage. They are they are an evolution they are evolutionarily better than humanity because they have adapted these abilities to survive, right? That's what evolution is. Almost superior. It's interesting because Owen, I was watching um Purdy, not Purdy, I was watching M stream. Or something. No, I was watching Owen on Tig stream. <laughs> Tig was playing with Owen and this that other thing. And somebody mentioned how they read that like there's been some studies some, that suggest that like autism is the next step in human evolution. Mm. There's really no like proof to suggest that because evolution is triggered by a need, like a survival need. And I don't right. think there, or at least I haven't read of any like there's no like identifiable survival need in people with autism. They're a lot there's uh, usually a lot like smarter and able to like absorb information. Some of them are savants and like they'll fucking be mm, piano yeah. experts and shit. But is that a survival need? Not necessarily. But it's an interesting According to when evil lurks on the you survive cusp of, getting possessed. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> on the on the cusp of the next stage of enlightenment or whatever. Yeah. So that's interesting. But yeah, mutations are exactly that. So I, I've always found the X-Men fascinating, given that I've always loved like, you know, like learning about like science and stuff like that. Like, because like, what is the next step of human evolution? There's gotta yeah. be something because we've already evolved well, I mean, from. Yeah. Uh, evolutionarily speaking, they, I think our, our pinky toe or our toenails are probably going to be gone before too long is what they say. will <laughs> actually like evolve to change. Is... Well, there's a lot of stuff about humans that are like, real weaknesses that like didn't get addressed at evolution like you know um you know when your hands get wrinkly when they're wet mm-hmm. that's because so can, we've adapted yeah. to have better grip when we're wet underwater underwater yeah. but we don't need mm-hmm. that anymore so it's just we're left with fucking dumbass wrinkled fingers when we get wet <laughs> it's like a dumb thing our eyes like a lot of people attribute like uh, family members of mine that of that have it's an argument that religious people make when they're like backed into a corner and they're like just look at the human eye it's so beautifully complex that it has to be like created by a deity. Yeah. Our eyes are actually fucking terrible. Like they among get fucking dry compared to other animals. Yeah. Compared to other animals. I can't even see without fucking <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I don't want to hear that. Right. Compared to other animals, our eyes are like really bad. Like we have a very limited view where most animals have like full panorama vision to like survive if they're getting attacked by predators and stuff. We could barely see at night. We at can't night, see yeah. underwater. Like our eyes really <laughs> fucking suck. So yeah. it's True. just a lot of interesting stuff when you, when, you know, talking about evolution, but anyhow, we're going off yeah. on a tangent, but for that reason, I've always found the x Men kind of fascinating. Um, and I'm glad you're enjoying yeah. it, Marvin. Yep. It's good. You're about they to get on a, a crazy cliffhanger, which I also won't spoil. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, there's a lot they put in this episode too. I might try to watch. It was crazy. I might try to watch Bang Them Out tonight. I, I mentioned there's a lot to talk about. There's like a bunch of other shows now, excuse me, that I like need to watch that are just fucking on my list. Silo was one of them. I like forgot that existed. So thanks for reminding me mm -hmm. of that, adding that to my fucking anxiety. Dusty mentioned like a couple weeks ago, the Gremlin show came out. I totally forgot about that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I wanted to watch the gentleman. I've heard that was really good. That came out on Netflix. It's the spinoff of the movie of the same name, the Guy Ritchie movie. Have you yeah. heard of that show, Three Body Problem? Nope, that just Netflix. came out yesterday. Supposed to be um, really good. Who was that? Kojima just tweeted about how good it was. Yep, and people were like, oh, this has to be a good show. He's fucking writing well, people paragraphs were, about it. I think people were also hyping it because it's one of the creators of Game of Thrones. Mm, yeah. Right. Well, Did you finish show Shogun, fucking, Marvin? I'm caught up, yeah. There's fucking episode, Shogun I gotta watch? Good five, lord. I think. Yeah. Well, how many episodes are there? It's like on episode eight, isn't it? I think I thought there were only eight or something. Nah, ten? there's ten. There's only five oh, okay. released so far. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I still got some some weeks. <laughs> I'm drowning here, guys. Yeah. yeah. I'm drowning. Got to catch up. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, I mentioned like this is a bunch of fucking shit happened this week. Usually all the cool shit happens or gets announced after we record, but we got lucky this week. We did, did you guys watch the trailer for Beetlejuice Beetlejuice? Mm -hmm. I did, yeah. Marvin, that have you seen sick. the original? Yeah, I have. Oh, wow. <laughs> What'd you think about it? It looks sick. I mean... He looks old as Michael fuck Keaton. in he the does. makeup. He I mean, does. he's in his 70s, yeah. so, but, but, but still, I feel yeah. like it's going to be good. Yeah, what's the uh, actress's name? Um, Winona Ryder. Yeah, Winona Ryder. Yeah, yeah, she looks she, good. She does. Yeah, I saw I a really interesting theory from the trailer. You would think that they are at the funeral of Charles Dietz, Lydia's father. Mm -hmm. Right. But I saw an interesting theory that Lydia is the one who's dead, and if it's oh, that's cool. and if it's following the rules of the original. When you die, you don't necessarily know you die. Like if you right, remember, like chilling. Alec Baldwin and what's her name in the first one didn't know they were dead for a while. Right. So that could be an interesting plot point. But Michael Keaton and both Tim Burton have claimed like <clears throat> it took this long to make it because they never thought they had like a good story to tell. So hopefully it's good. And yep. uh, uh, if it's successful, I mean they got to complete the trilogy, right? With Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Like it's got to happen. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I like that there's no uh, CGI. It's all practical effects and claymation stop motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Just like yeah. the original. Um, I posted a bunch of shit in the Discord over the weekend, but that movie that we've been hyped about or that I've been hyped about, Late Night with the Devil, it's been both the subject of a Twitter controversy. I don't know if that's in your news piece, and I'm stepping on your toes, Dusty, but... <laughs> no, that's fine. Well, funny enough, I'm hyped for it. It's an indie film. It's being said as like one of the best horror movies of the last 10 years, whatever the fuck. It made $666,000 this weekend, which is hilarious, given the fact that it's a movie about, like, <laughs> yep. uh, 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 possession. Um, but it was the subject of some controversy. Some nerds on Twitter were trying to... Uh, um, what's the word for, like, when you want to ban something? They, they were trying to... Uh, Cancel. Cancel. Not cancel it, but yeah, kind of, because there was the they used some uh, AI art in the film. Mm. And it's like, mm. bro, get a fucking life. There's like a fucking genocide happening. Like, put your energy <laughs> elsewhere. Like, what are you talking about? So uh, I thought that was funny. But yeah, I'm excited to watch that. I'm not going to go to Brooklyn to see it. That's unfortunately the only place it's playing around here. Mm. But Well, it's early screening, right? Yeah, but it's also coming out April 22nd, I think, to streaming. So yeah. we could catch yeah. it then. Yeah. But I another did watch the uh, In a Violent Nature. I was trailer. just going to ask, did you watch the trailer for that? That shit looks yeah. good. Looks good. For what? In a Violent Nature, the movie that follows the perspective of the killer. It's basically a slasher movie that follows the killer. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And it looks very much like Friday the 13th inspired, but it's like, I can't right. believe that in all these years since the 70s, when like slasher films like first started becoming a thing, that it took this long this yeah for a movie to actually follow the perspective of the killer that's killer pov Isn't that wild that took that long yeah it is but i've heard that's really good um 
And then the other thing that came out too was um, the movie with Sydney Sweeney, uh, the horror movie that she's in currently. Um, Is that good? What's the I, looking like? I don't know. It's called Immaculate. It's got a 6.3. That's not terrible. No, and I she think... She does play a really good scared uh, woman, so it could probably be pretty good based on that. That's like her strength as a, an actress, I feel. Yeah, she's but... good at crying. She's good at looking very afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, maybe yeah. she should uh, <laughs> play more into that. Um, yeah, it seems to have caught the eye of uh, Christian conservatives. I messaged you guys. Uh, when was it? A couple days ago. Uh, here it is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at it now. The uh, oh, uh, that's what that was. Yeah. Yeah, this made it to a T-shirt. Apparently, Kojima even retweeted it, which is hilarious. You mentioned Kojima, but Libs saw how the anti woke crowd embraced Sydney Sweeney as their new darling, and right away had to shove her in this blasphemous, satanic, feminist, pro-abortion, <laughs> anti-life movie degrading Christians. This movie also debases Mary, mother of the Christ. Don't bother watching. <laughs> so I think they how released Sydney Sweeney, the anti woke darling i think because she just shows like she has her tits out a lot oh i think the anti-woke crowd took that as like the symbol of like fuck woke that's liberals or whatever so easy they're fucking yeah i don't know okay got it so i that's what that's what i assumed i don't know how true that is i can't think of any other reason why she'd be the anti-woke darling or whatever the fuck <laughs> that but, has to be it yeah, yeah that's yeah. hilarious but i don't I'm know sure I, she said something along the way that got piqued people's interest maybe yeah Mm, maybe. I, I hadn't been interested in this movie, but now I kind of am. Anytime Christians get offended by something, I definitely uh, <laughs> pay attention. Yeah. So um, I posted that Sing Sing trailer. I don't know if you guys saw it. I didn't but, get um, around to watching that. What is that all about? I watched. It I looks watched pretty that. good. Yeah. It's about a guy that goes to prison and start not starts or joins like a um, a group a theater about, prison yeah theater. like a theater yeah. prison like reformation hmm. type of thing it just looks it just looks like a a good feel good movie. interesting yeah it's got um god what's his name now i can't think of his name don't the know guy that was in uh i'm terrible uh, with names yeah no that's fine I the like main him. actor coleman domingo yeah yeah him. yeah i don't know who he is i've never seen him before oh well he's good he was Come in on. Fear of the Walking Dead. He was oh, in that watched new movie, it. Rustin. Oh, he was in he some was of that I have seen. Okay. The Color Purple movie. Okay. Which okay. I also haven't seen, but yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of, lot of crazy shit getting announced this week. What's up? I watched um, Roadhouse. The other oh, day. yeah, I forgot that dropped. That oh, was, I didn't realize that was going straight to like digital. Well, we talked about that in the news. Um, the, the, the director... Uh, um, I forget his name. Uh, he was he was um, uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, trying to cancel it or n not cancel it, but he was uh, yeah, he didn't protesting want to... against it. Yeah, because right. it was going to digital and not theater. Right, that but was this movie. Oh, okay. Jake Gyllenhaal came out and said, like, yeah, we knew it wasn't going to theater and. Like the director offered them sixty five million for theater, uh, or eighty five million for digital, or sixty five million for theater. They took the eighty five million, and then now it's going. It came out, but yeah, I yeah, don't know. Get that guaranteed it, money because I don't know. Yeah, how Road was House? it? I don't give a fuck about Roadhouse. It's not Roadhouse. It's a <laughs> terrible, terrible adaption. They shouldn't call it Roadhouse. Call it anything <laughs> else, but it's He's not offended. Roadhouse. Was it a remake yeah. or a sequel? Damn. No, it was a remake. So, so he plays the same Oof. character as Patrick Swayze. Essentially, yes. Okay. Oof. It's a lot of that, re or not remakes, but like slapping a name on something that fucking yeah. sucks just to get people to. Speaking watch of, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I don't know if this is in your news either, but what do you guys think of the Happy Gilmore announcement? Uh, oh, yeah. I don't think it's necessary. It's whatever. I'll probably watch it. I'll probably watch it too. But I mean, damn. We got to stop. It's been a while since we he's stop. done some <laughs> we slapstick line. comedy, though. Like, he went on a after... Is that slapstick? I wouldn't say slapstick, but uh, well, I know what you mean. It's like vintage the, Adam Sandler. Yeah, yeah. The, the type of humor yeah, it is, yeah. Because he, he went in all the family stuff mm -hmm. and the yep, friend, yep. you know. Vintage Sandler. He went a lot softer. Cool. It's not... Yeah, I mean, like, I want to see Adam Sandler in more, like... Uh, 
What's the um? Kun Kun Jones. That movie? I think he's yeah, a great I actor. See more like that. He's done some serious roles besides that one that I thought was going to click. Is a rather serious movie by the end of it, and that movie I think is great. Mm. I I love Adam Sandler. People shit on him because it's like cool to shit on him. And it's just like I don't you know. Shit on him? Oh yeah, people people his, his movies are like wildly hated by a lot of I used people. Used to listen to his CD stand-ups back in the day in high school. Yeah. The goat. Yeah. So speaking of things that are cool to shit on, let's talk about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Uh oh. Because you at you reviews. Well, yeah, before you, you get into it. Yeah. <laughs> can, can I just say uh I'm sure you probably saw the same trailers I did, right? Like um yeah, yeah. The Challengers, the, the Zendaya flick and uh what was the the tarot movie? Tower movie like, looks so is, bad. <laughs> But this is a PG-13 movie. Mm -hmm. We were there with children. And they're like playing rated R fucking trailers. Yeah. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Close <laughs> well, your eyes, wow, guys. Also, crazy. though, the in my theater, they did show some children's movies, like the sequel to uh, Inside or whatever the fuck, or Upside Down. I don't know, one of those fucking kids. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That, with, the, with the feelings or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so G Frozen Empire right now sitting on Rotten Tomatoes with a 43% rotten <sighs> critic score. Critics. But yeah. an 85% fresh uh the one that matters. user score, we audience score, it. and it's on IMDb with a 6.6. .6. So, what's the fucking story mm. here, boys? This movie is cool to hate right now, and I'm seeing it on film tw film Twitter where people are like just Shitting on the Ghostbusters in general, I've seen tweets like, "Can we just, can we just admit that the Ghostbusters was never as good as people made it out to be?" Or all this, sh it's like, it's like cool well, to hate on it for some reason right now. It had an animated show that was just as popular as Batman, yeah. Spider Man, and the X Men. I think a lot of people, uh, you know, Twitter is not indicative of because it's Twitter and it's like people just doing stuff for clicks and bait and this that and the thing. But I think the general consensus in terms of reviews is that this movie is like directionless. It doesn't know what it wants to be. It seems pointless. It's unfunny, blah, 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 blah. Mm. And I think the majority of people that went into it, it's like, I just want to see a Ghostbusters movie. We're like pretty satisfied with it. Um, that said, mm, I, I didn't love it. I enjoyed it, but I it has its problems. Um, mm -hmm. Dusty, why don't, you, why don't you talk about what you thought about it first? Uh, yeah, I mean, it felt like it failed to, like, I, uh, what, what's his, the director's name? Gil uh, Keenan. Gil, Gil Keenan, yeah. He talked about how they wanted to take, um, they wanted to take stuff from the animated series rather than the part two movie where Vigo's in it. <clears throat> they wanted to make their, basically their own ghosts. I think they did a good job of that. give it its own backstory and stuff. I mean, they kind of did, but they kind of didn't. Like, hey, you, you kind of get the story of it. Like, okay, here's the ball. There's something inside. Oh, this, whatever's came out, it's cold. But that's all, like, <laughs> that felt like a backstory to the movie that we were watching, which was the kids in New York doing kid things and family things. Well, that's the problem, I think, with the movie overall, is it did lack a little bit of a direction. And honestly, it felt like what I... I don't know if you remember, but when this was first announced, I was a little bit hesitant because I was like, Ugh. when I found out Jason Reitman wasn't directing because he directed Afterlife, yeah. I was like, Ugh. Well, I, I think he stepped down, though, because his dad just passed away, so... This was announced before, I think, um, Ivan Reitman passed away. Maybe he was sick oh, and everything. Really? Either way... When I heard that he stepped down from directing, I was like, Ugh, that's a little bit dangerous. And honestly, having watched this after watching Afterlife a couple years ago at this point, Afterlife came out in 2021. So it's only three mm -hmm. years past, less than that, like a little bit more, whatever. I, I, I think if I had to guess, I don't think Jason Reitman had a huge role in the writing of this either. Because the writing is really where this movie struggled for me. And it didn't have that heart and soul that Afterlife had. Afterlife was like like heart and love and just like was pouring out of that movie. And it had a lot to do with the fact that, yes, it's 30 years later of a beloved franchise. Yes, it was a tribute to Harold Ramis, who was a beloved 
actor and director and writer. Yes, it's seeing the band back together and all this stuff, but really it was because I've Jason Reitman grew up on the set of Ghostbusters one and two. Like it's mm-hmm. it it's him. It's inside him. And and you felt that in Afterlife. That's why that movie I say all the time, you know, Marvin sat here for several times and heard us like gushing about Afterlife and how we said it's like the fucking gold standard for fan service and like how to craft a good movie with fan service and new stuff. But that's because of how close Jason Reitman is to the source material, I think. And I think you could feel his absence in, in Frozen Empire, personally. Um, yeah. Because you get a lot of stuff that like I, as a Ghostbusters fanboy, would want to see. You get them living in the firehouse. You get to see like the everyday <laughs> life of living in the firehouse, which you don't even get to see really in the original. In the original, you get like one scene where they're kind of like eating the Chinese food or or uh, what's his name's fucking getting a dream blow job from a ghost. Like <laughs> you don't get a lot of like in the firehouse life where you do get in this, which I thought was cool. You get a little bit of like the kids like living in the city, but it's not a lot. Right. Like a mat, like, I don't know. It's cool that you'd see like, well, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I just don't think the, the, that same, you could just, I think you well, just it felt a lot like the first one. It felt a lot like afterlife, except, um, yeah, I don't think it did. The stuff, it felt, it felt a little more forced, like the, the love and the family messaging. It felt a little more forced, but it was just a different ghost. Well, like, this movie would, I think what you mean is this movie, whereas afterlife, the, the fan service in afterlife felt like it didn't, it wasn't overwhelming to where it was like offensive and in your face. It was like, oh, Hey, like. Here's a nod at the fucking Nestle Crunch bar that Vankman gives Egon in the first one. Just a little throwaway little thing that's like, hey, if you remember this, good for you. That's cute. Right. This movie was like, hey, remember this? Hey, remember this? Hey, remember this? So, uh, again, that's why I don't think Jason Reitman was that involved in the right writing because it just seems like this movie like packed into fan service to the point where it was like, eh, okay, this is like, I don't really... It's cheap care for it i i wouldn't even say cheap well yeah kind of cheap um especially with bill murray like bill murray shows up and he's like he's like saying the same lines he said like <laughs> 40 years ago and i'm like oh okay funny. like come on now yeah. right. um but overall i i actually enjoyed I, I enjoyed the movie did you did you enjoy yeah, it, it overall yeah it was a good film yeah um i thought i thought like i thought it was good i i thought I, I hadn't heard what you just said, that the goal was to, like, basically do what the cartoon did, where you create your own ghost, essentially, and, like, have its own little mythology. Because that's another yeah. reason why Afterlife was very strong, I thought. It, like, built on the lore of the original with fucking yeah. Evo Shandor Gozer. and Zul and Gozer. This was, like, kind of its own thing. And you're right, the villain in this definitely played second fiddle to, like, the three other plots that were going on at the same time. So yeah. I think the biggest problem with this movie is that it there was just too many people in it. There was too much mm-hmm. going on. Um, you have the like the new crew, Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace, and they're doing like their their ghost busting stuff. All of a sudden the kid podcast shows up, like, and then he it's like one little throw. Because you, you're thinking you're like, what the fuck is he doing in New York? He's from Oklahoma. How'd he get here? Right. The family moving makes sense because they inherited the firehouse. Also, yeah. Yeah, Lucky and him, it's just like they each have their own. And oh, I told my parents I'm at space camp. Oh, she's, I'm interning for like fucking uh, Winston. It's like, all right, that's a little bit weird. And then, (laughs) especially with Lucky, she had like no place in the movie. She didn't do anything. So, what's the point of even like bringing her back here? Um, Then you got William Aherton playing Walter Peck, like, for no reason, just because he was in the original. Didn't really serve much of a purpose. To Marvin, you know Peck because you just watched the original. Yeah. He's back now and he's the mayor and he's just like, ah, I still hate the Ghostbusters. So that like kind of made no fucking sense. <laughs> Kumail Nanjiani's in it because he's the MacGuffin. He's like the one that like kind of drives. He's the he, he introduces the villain and is the answer to defeating the villain, which was comical. <laughs> The fire master, yeah. He's basically a firebender. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? And then Patton Oswald is in it to give all the exposition and lore about the villain. 
which is what the Ghostbusters are supposed to do. Why do you need a whole new extra throwaway character to do what Ray Stance did in the original? Like, Ray is the occult guy. Ray knows about all this stuff. Ray figures all this stuff out because he has access to Tobin's spirit guide and, like, all these books and stuff. So it's like, why would you need a whole nother character to explain this stuff to you? And then the other MacGuffin, which was Melody... The, the ghost that, like, is kind of befriending McKenna Grace for some reason. Like, well, we know the reason. And, like, you knew she was going to be, like, the, the savior at the end. It was just, like, there's literally, like, four or five even plots going on that just don't jive with one another whatsoever. Personally, mm -hmm. I thought. It was, it was a little bit of a clunky movie. Um, so is it as good as the last one, Afterlife? No. Um... Is it as good as Ghostbusters 2, which is hated? Not hated, but it's, like, less liked. No. But was it good? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It's better than that other Ghostbusters movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. It's, like, people talking shit about this movie. It's, like, I've seen people that are just, like, it's, like, yo, can you just, like, do you hate joy? Like, go into something, like, you don't have, it doesn't have to be fucking Oppenheimer to enjoy it. You know? For sure, yeah. Like, it's the fucking Ghostbusters. Like, it's a fun fucking movie. Well, there's some problems with it? Absolutely. But do I enjoy seeing fucking Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and the OGs, like, suit up again? Absolutely. Like, I'll, you'll, ne like you'll never not get me in a theater with these guys. Like, in any movie, really. But Ghostbusters, specifically? Man. So I enjoyed it. Do you have any problems yeah. with it? Like, or basically what I said. Yeah, no, I mean, I had some problems with it. it, it it's here a dusty gripe. <laughs> a logic gripe. Well, like I said, like the, the ghosts being the background of the story wasn't really. Was yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I want to, you know, and you come to find out, well, it's you know, ancient stuff. Ancient, ancient. Only five people in the world could read this language. And like, what was his motivation? Like vengeance about something? Yeah, it's like so not important. Yeah, um, I think it had. To yeah, pick no, it wasn't a bad movie. It's worth it's worth a watch if you like Ghostbusters. But yeah, it's not, you're not gonna go away being like, "Wow, that was amazing!" I wanna watch it again immediately. Like I, that's how not I immediately. About Afterlife. A Afterlife, I watched it like five times in a row when it first came out. Yeah. This, I probably I'll watch it again, but not not like right away. Um, I wish going forward, because. Clearly, like, the Ghostbusters has been an everlasting franchise for a re Like, they have opportunity to continue the franchise with the new group because the new crew is charming. Like, Finn Wolfhard in this movie didn't really get much to do other than be like, I'm 18. <laughs> yeah. Carrie Coon didn't get much to do like she did in the first one. Paul Rudd was funny. McKenna Grace is great. Like, they have a lot of opportunity to go forward with the franchise, but I think in order to do it and be good about it, they have to have the guts to move away from the original crew. Like they, they had their time. We got their cameos. Like, I think it's okay to move away from them. If you want to have them show up here and there to do like little funny one liners, throwaways, fine. But like Bill Murray, at parts of this movie didn't even look like he wanted to be there. And I know it's Bill Murray, but it just seemed like, it's like, all right, here's your three hours on set. Give us whatever you got. <laughs> and he's, you yeah. know, and he's thinking about like lunch or something. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, like, going forward, like, forget about the OGs, like, focus on the new group and go back to, like, ghost busting again. It's one of the things I noticed when I watched the original tonight is that, like, a huge chunk of that movie is, like, them actually ghost busting. You don't get a lot of that yeah. in Afterlife because it's the kids, like, discovering the technology and, like, the mystery the of what's going on yeah. and stuff. But this movie, where there was opportunity to actually do ghost busting, there really wasn't much. It was like them leaving and McKenna Grace. We're, we're left with McKenna Grace, like, who wasn't a part of it for reasons. And you're like, oh, okay, well, I kind of want to see them bust ghosts. <laughs> so, I don't know. Those are my my thoughts on it. I, I enjoyed it. None of it was enough for me to, like, say, oh, fuck this movie. Um, Definitely disappointed because they didn't have a cameo from, uh, what's his name? I thought, I really thought, I, I had a, I, I felt like they were going to, but they didn't, um, from, uh, what's his name? The little guy. The fuck's his name? Why can't I think of it? <sighs> Come on. The little guy. The little guy? 
Come on, you know. No, fucking Honey, I Shrunk the Kids guy. Oh, Oh, Rick Rick Moranis. Oh yeah, Rick. Rick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I thought, I thought, like, all right, fine, maybe we'll get a cameo from him. That'd be sick. They didn't. Um, (laughs) He's somewhere chilling. Well, he hasn't acted in like forty years, Marvin. Since he had kids, I think. Well, no, his wife died of cancer, and he quit Ooh. acting to like be around for his kids. But he has not been in anything yeah. in a really long time. That's why the whole "Honey, I Shrunk the Kids" revival was like a big deal. But, um, right. But yeah, so overall, I liked it. Had a nice little dedication at the end, you know, for Ivan. Um, but we'll see where we go from here. Are we gonna get more Ghostbusters? I hope so. Um, but yeah, Did you I watch think, the mid credits scene. Yeah, yeah, it didn't have like what it was even. I don't even know. It was just like the fucking Stay Puff Stay things, Puff. like just doing <laughs> stuff. Yeah, just go sell some toys. Yeah, but yeah, that's my overall take. Is that I think I could be wrong, but I, I definitely think I felt what was ultimately Jason Reitman's like absence from the overall script and stuff. Yeah, this felt more like a money grab than an actual attempt at making what was the tribute that was afterlife yeah maybe a little bit yeah yeah still better than the all-female one though not because it was all females those every one of those women is individually hilarious and had great moments in that movie but that movie was just yeah there's good. some funny parts in that movie but yeah it's just not a good movie. Just movie yeah bad um but yeah i mean this has a 6.6 on imdb i'm like i'm like right there i'd give it like a 6.5 what about you yeah six and a half all right all right. Well, that's that. Um, the news. Yeah. That's, let's get into the news. Unless you guys have anything mm-hmm. else you wanted to talk about mm-hmm. before the news. Trailers? No, not no? really. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What well, we got? we'll talk about a couple of them. Oh, okay. Uh, so we talked about the Beetlejuice trailer. Uh, also from WB, we got the pe- Penguin teaser. Did you guys see this? I Ooh. didn't watch that yet, but I did watch. Apparently, he had to like fight tooth and nail to smoke a cigar in it So for some reason. Uh, uh, I don't know. Probably. That makes sense. Don't see what. Uh, so but he is smoking in a cigar in it. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Yeah, apparently he had to like really fight with WB to for the penguin to smoke a cigar. Apparently they That's haven't insane. had. Apparently they haven't had. I can see that from Disney, cigar. but like. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. That's well, crazy. that's quintessential penguin. Why well, usually he has the stick with the cigarette in it, but. Yeah, he's got the fancy <laughs> smoking stick, so your fingers don't smell and stain. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we we got a trailer for that. It's coming out this year sometime. We still don't have a solid date. I'd probably assume closer to the end of the year since they pushed Batman, the Batman part two, at least right. back to October 2026. And they don't want there to be a big. So it'll probably come out in the end of this year. Mm-hmm. If I were to be a betting man, but who knows? Also got a couple House of the Dragon. Uh, we got the dueling trailers. I don't know if you saw these, Marvin. We got ah, a teaser shit. for two, the black. The black trailer for the Targaryens and the the green trailer for the High Towers. Uh, supposed to choose a side. They're hyping it up. Oh but, shit! Uh, <laughs> Marvel Civil yeah, War shit that's coming cool. out uh, June sixteenth. So this summer we'll have more House of the Dragon. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, and I don't know if you saw this, Dan, but actor Douglas Smith has joined the cast of Superman and Lois final season as Daily Planet's photographer Jimmy Olsen. Saw that. Are we going um, back to the Daily Planet, or is the Daily Planet coming to Smallville? Uh, know, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if you like. There's some synopsis to his character in that he's um, he's the life of the party or whatever, and he just wants to break Clark out of his shell, and he wants to be friends with him and stuff. So hmm. I'd imagine there'd be some point of contention there in the story as hmm. the show goes on. Well, I can't talk much about it and speculate because you haven't fucking watched the season. Yeah. I'll so, finish it <laughs> when I get back home. Yeah. There's uh, a. Too long. It ends on a huge cliffhanger. So I don't know I'm, yeah. really what they're going to do. It's just going to piss me off. So I'd rather do it and wait <laughs> like right before it starts. Okay. <laughs> um, Okay. Um, James Gunn on a thread statement. He shot down any chances of a bright burn sequel. Somebody asked him about it because of the mid credit scene in that movie. What was the uh, mid credit scene? No, I don't even remember. No plans at all for this right now. Uh, it, it was like that there were other super powered people, I think, uh, right. on okay. the planet. Not necessarily oh. anything. I think that's what it was. You see Brightburn, Marvin? Yeah. We don't need a 
we don't need anything else from there. Yeah, it doesn't really need a sequel. Universe. It was good standoff, standalone film. Like, you know, you don't need to explore that world, really. You already did. What are you going to do? Did you say James Gunn? Have a Gunn bunch of psychopathic threats? fucking killers, super Yeah, heroes. right. Yeah. Yeah, he's on Threads. You already have this show. It's called The Boys. I didn't realize people were using Threads. Yeah, I think uh, he's people are still. getting paid to use it. Yeah, no, people are still on Threads. I don't know. Some people <laughs> use it. Yeah. Um, and then the last little bit of WB news here, Ryan Johnson and Ram Bergman's company, T Street, has signed a two-picture deal uh, to produce a couple movies with Warner Brothers. Not sure if Ryan Johnson is going to be directing or what these films are, but, you know, he did his stuff with Lionsgate and then Netflix with his Knives Out stuff. And oh, I was not a fan Wars. of Glass Onion, I ain't going to lie. Yeah, he did his Star Wars stuff with Disney. And so now his his company's gonna do a couple movies for WB. So we'll see what, what he's got cracking there. Like I said, who knows if he's directing or what these movies are, but Okay. Um on to Disney. We uh we got the Acolyte trailer. Big. That Big. was fucking yeah. amazing. That, that looked trailer. good, yeah. Yeah. We uh we talked a little bit about it last week. Um yeah, it yeah, came out last week, right? Really we we talked about it. Yeah, we did. The trailer was the yeah. trailer out last week. Or? Yeah, I think so. Well, we Maybe were not? talking about it. I don't know if the trailer had come out yet. Oh, I don't I think, think the trailer had, came out. I think there I, was some more I news posted it in the like, in the Discord the next morning. I think. I think some more news came out after there was a tweet from Culture Crave, set hmm. 100 years before the Phantom Menace. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, no, it did come out last week. We talked about the trailer and we were questioning. The time period, and the then yeah. then the news yeah. came. Then, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Narratively similar to Andor, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Obviously, eight episodes again. Only thirty minute episodes, though, which I yeah. guess that's fine. Mm -hmm. Looks like but, it's got a Zoomer cast. That's my only gripe so far with it. But whatever. <laughs> Most importantly, if it's good, that is, it's pitched as a multi season show. Yeah, so I think yeah. that's cool. That I don't care about. I'll take a one. <laughs> I do if it's show. good. Nah, nah, nah. I'd rather have a. Well, I've, I mean, it's a story away from the, the canon that you. Yeah, yeah we need more so of much though. Like, yeah, but that's yeah, exactly. but, the, but that's ripe for like one-offs. The whole point of getting away from Canada is so you don't get stuck in that cycle of like, well, we have to make eight seasons of this to milk it like Mandalorian. No, that's an extreme eight seasons. You can still have. Ten yeah, but I mean, you can bring in old seasons. characters. Marvin, go watch Mandalorian. Every season is exactly the same. And now they're it. making a fucking movie about it. Grogu and the Mandalorian. How's it going to be any different than the fucking show? Like, who just then, <laughs> Just do a thing and then move on. That's it. It's not a big deal. That's spaghetti I can Western, see both sides. what they are. I get it, but I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of everything. Just do something and then yeah. move on. And then maybe revisit it down the road. Everything has to be made with, like, the, the express purpose of, like, franchising or sequelizing. Or it's like... In that in yeah. that sense, I understand why people fucking hate Marvel is because Marvel like broke the brain of Hollywood. Like it, like every goddamn thing has to be a universe or fucking, <laughs> like good lord. Yeah, I mean it's it's I'm sure it helps the business model too. If they're making a show that specifically goes to their streaming platform, I mean obviously but here's it's not the, the same where you you invest all this money into like the cast and like the set and all this shit. There's no model. They're not gonna make that, the same. Though. It's just, what do you mean? it's There's purely the customer just, retention. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's retention. I think it's like how to milk as much as possible before the customers don't give a fuck. Like, I don't think it's retention. If you Maybe. have, if you have customer retention in mind, you want to deliver the best possible product. Generally speaking, the product quality diminishes as it goes on. Yeah, no, that's true. I'm just saying. No, I get if you, what you're if, if if you do an investment in something, you want to capitalize on that investment. Oh, for Especially sure. Especially when it comes to a, a show that goes directly to streaming. No, that for you're sure. not getting like actual revenue from like it being in theaters or something. So, yeah, absolutely. You got to hire yourself as a fine Snyder. line there with the balance of that, like yeah. pleasing the fans, but also obviously it's a business, so they right. got to make money. You got to hire yourself a Zack Snyder who's going to go on the world's biggest podcast and be like, yeah, more people watched my shit on Netflix than Barbie. <laughs> just lie. Yeah. Just lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Dusty. Mm, that's all right. Oh, what else? Well, we had the Alien Romulus teaser. That looks yes. really good. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. We got some angry comments, by the way, on our fucking videos. 
that we were shitting on Prometheus and uh, the other one. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Somebody wrote this, like, <laughs> long-ass fucking... thing, was like, well, fucking David was an allegory for this, this, and this, and the xenomorphs already existed. It's clearly <laughs> stated in the movie. It's like, bro, shut the fuck up, you nerd. The movies were not good. <laughs> That's just all there is to it. David was a whack character. I like Prometheus, and I'm yeah. in the minority there. So. A lot of people watched it, liked it. Go watch it. I liked it, too, when it first came out. Go watch it again. You'll be like, wow, no, this movie sucks. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. It's a ridiculous movie. It's just That's not good. That's why you only watch it once. Yep. Well, no, I've seen it like <laughs> twice, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know which one is more ridiculous. They're both watchable, but they're both also No, the, the second one is definitely worse than Prometheus. Covenant, Covenant is bad. Yeah. Prometheus is like not as good as you remember it. <laughs> Covenant's Probably not. terrible. Covenant's bad. <laughs> Covenant, which is the one that had like fucking, what's his name? <laughs> but whatever, what it, go ahead with the news. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Romulus. So we got the aim in Romulus. It looks good. Yeah, it looks good. good. August. Uh, More summer bangers coming. And yeah. he said they're using That's today. Exciting. Alvarez said they're, it's all practical, right? Yes. He has like a. Ooh, he's CGI. like. He's no like green, vehemently. No green screens. I mean. Yeah. yeah. He's like vehemently against green screens and CGI. So a lot. Of, I think he said it's all yeah. practical. Mm-hmm. Which interestingly, too, I found out Slimer in Frozen Empire was practical, also not CGI. Oh really? Uh, yeah. It's funny because uh, it would he he got some more screen time than some of the characters from the yeah. first movie. He did, yeah, he did. <laughs> Definitely had more screen time than Bill Murray. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dan, you posted that game, that Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. Oh yeah. Black Panther oh, yeah, and Captain yeah. America World War II. Mm-hmm. I I'm trying to click on the link now. I guess it doesn't exist anymore, but I don't know. Looks kind of cool. That's yeah, It's the chick who left yeah. Naughty Dog. She's one of the she's one of the writers. She's a head writer on Uncharted, the Uncharted series. So people are like, oh, hyped for it. okay. Could be yeah. shitty gameplay, like just like um the other Marvel games that we've had recently. I don't expect much. Well, <laughs> yeah, that one was yeah, that was uh like was Avengers, Enix, actually, and which then, is surprising. Avengers was Square Enix, which is sad. And then Guardians. Yeah. What came out? Oh, that was Suicide Squad. That shit got fucking The Spider-Man destroyed. game always hits, but that's Sony. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, speaking of Black Can- Panther, um, Marvel's Eyes of Wakanda will be in the MCU timeline. I don't know uh, what that I is. That it was Brad Winter, Win- Winderbaum was talking about this. Um, this is a TV series coming to Disney Plus this year sometime. Um, it's about Wakandan history and mythology. It's an animated series. I think it's eight to ten episodes. So I think eight. I don't know. No, Disney does. Well, they're redoing everything, so I don't even know what it's going to be now. But this is a <laughs> an animation uh, series that they're going to bring. It's called Eyes of Wakanda. That's gonna, was it not supposed to be canon? Uh, I mean, I, I, you never can tell with some of them. That's with, true. With the like animation. Their animation and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's true. weird. I was gonna be from Ryan Coogler too. That's interesting. Yeah. Yes. Do you think uh, directors are like equally as good or skilled when it comes to animated stuff? I don't know what you mean. Like, will they will they no. be as good as the move? Like, is a directing the movie the same as directing the no, animated of course. show? No, of course not. Huge part well, of directing. I'm saying, does, does the skill? Do you think the skill translates well of directing a movie versus directing? For animation? certain, for certain things, I guess it just probably is very dependent on the director. Huge part of directing is about, uh, like, well, you're storyboarding in both, but I think in with animation, you actually the director has to rely on the artist a little bit more. A huge part oh, of what a director film. does in film yeah, is like sense. direct actors. Mm. Right. So it's different in animation because so there is like, a lot of that. Yeah. So he's he's like cra- he's crafting the animation in real life, so to speak, versus yeah, like I, I guess it's just a comp- it's a different craft. I don't know if it translates. I mean, I'm sure it does a little bit, but yeah. Um, like a lot of what people think directors do in films is not what they do at all. Like they're not the ones. Like half of what a movie is is like from cinematographers. For sure. Not from directors. Like a lot of it is, in, a lot of what directors do is like, you know, uh, it has to do they with They place the, them there and then everyone else kind of has to has, execute. It has a lot to do with the actors and like, they're kind of, they kind of like, they're the ringleaders for sure. 
but a lot yeah. of like the crafting of things is like it all boils down to like people around them. So, yeah, yeah. I don't really have a answer to your question. I guess I'm sure a little bit, but I think it's too different. Well, I just it's just yeah, interesting it's the then why they would choose him. Just if because he's been in part, he's been he's part name. of the MCU. <clears throat> yeah, Black Panther well, films. Good. Like he, he, you know, he did both of them. Like he, he wrote a lot of what is the MCU Black Panther lore. So they probably just figured like, hey, let him, you know, continue it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't looked at his credits to see if he's ever done any animation at all. I don't think he has. But yeah. Um, all right. Well, speaking of Brad Winterbaum, he was also talking about the Marvel zombie show that we talked about. Was that happening? Is it not happening? It's still happening. It is. And apparently it's gonna be <laughs> for adults. Uh, this is what he had to say. Uh, in terms of more mature animation, yeah, we're making Marvel Zombies show right now. It's pretty intense, that's for sure. A TV MA show. And again, okay. it's trying to honor the comics. And what was so great about the comics was not pulling its punches. That's certainly what we're uh, going on for this project also. So, uh, Brian Andrews is directing with the story creator, Zeb Wells, is the writer and executive producer. So... Looks like we're getting some. I'm gonna add this to my list. Marvel's on Marvel this. Animation. Yeah, Marvel Animation hasn't been like they did some movies in the 2000s that were pretty good uh, before they really got into the whole MCU stuff. Mm -hmm. But WB's always been better at animation. Marvel's I don't know they do better live action. WB does better animation. I think Marvin, you meant the comic books. The comic, yeah, yeah, yeah. the actual, yeah. Five well, issues. that's a pretty short run. Yeah, you'll get through that one pretty yeah. quick. I think 2005 was like eight, I think, eight comics or something. It was a pretty short run. Yep. It's five issues, yeah. Yep. Right. What else we got? Well, uh, last little bit of news, I guess. Netflix has announced the Dead Boy Detectives will premiere on the streaming platform on April 25th, 2024. So, Dan, another one on the list. To just raise your anxiety levels. <laughs> is this uh, supposed this is gonna to be, be good? Eight, or? eight episodes. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, yeah, it oh, looks DC like they released a teaser like four months ago. Oh, it's a Neil Gaiman uh, thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is about the, the yeah the, the dead detectives. One's brains, one's brawn. Um, oh, I haven't heard so about this. Add that to my list. And Jeff too. Jeff Loeb <laughs> is is involved in, and he's been involved with a lot of WV comic book stuff. So. Marvin, did I'm looking you, forward to this one, yeah. Did you ever read the Sandman comics? I remember you saying you wanted to. Yeah, I to. did. You did, okay. It was amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But, oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, then, yeah I was going to segue into what we were doing with the, the Ghostbusters stuff, but we talked about that earlier, so that's really all the news I have for today. Oh, you were going to segue with Frozen Empire? Mm. Yeah. All right. But, I mean, I guess we could say it, did, it made $45 million this weekend, which... I mean, considering the first one cost thirty million dollars to make, and it made over a quarter of a uh, quarter of a billion, it did all right. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for the news, Dusty. Uh, let's mm -hmm. get into this week's movie, and that is uh, it's that time, folks. Once a month, we make <laughs> Marvin watch a movie that he hasn't seen that he should have. Dusty and I alternate each month. This month was my pick. I chose Ghostbusters. Because, like, let's face it, are you even a real person if you haven't seen Ghostbusters? I, <laughs> I would argue no. But guess what, Marvin? You became a real boy. I did. How's it feel? Because I... Right. <laughs> uh, at some point in time, I don't know when, but I feel like the art of just being funny died. Like, just being purely and truly funny. And what I mean by that is, like, a lot of comedies nowadays just... I don't know. It seems few and far between where it's, like, not to sound like an old guy, but, like... Uh, the comedies nowadays seem more and more to be like they rely on like sort of dirty like sex jokes and like sort of childish humor about like farts and dicks and shit for for laughs. Uh, a great example of that would be like, you know, the comedy movie like the big league guys nowadays are, you know, Seth Rogen and, and that group. And a lot of his movies, they're hilarious, but a lot of them rely on like sex, sex jokes and shit. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There's a there's certainly a place for that. But mm -hmm. I'll struggle to try to name a movie from the last like 10 to 15 years, at least, that is as effortlessly funny as Ghostbusters is. Um, mm. 
Of course, Ghostbusters is one of a billion examples of amazing 80s comedy movies. Dusty and I yep. will sure agree on that. But mm-hmm. I think Ghostbusters is certainly my favorite and, in my opinion, one of, if not the funniest. Um, and there's just so, so many moments and there's too many to name in the movie. Um, but there's a lot of little touches in this movie that you notice when you go back and watch them. No matter how many times I watch them, I, I like take note that make this movie like just like sort of magic in a way. Um, <laughs> one of which is actually at the end where they defeat Stay Puft and, you know, everybody's just covered in marshmallow and they're like fucking all like, oh, yeah. scattered. And, and Bill Murray just for no reason just casually walks out like just perfectly clean. <laughs> <laughs> they never explain yeah. it. Nobody ever makes like a mention of it. It's just, it's just there. <laughs> and I've always just found that fucking hilarious. But uh, but yeah, that's just a small example. Everybody knows what Ghostbusters is about. Um, we don't have to get into that, but it was directed by Ivan Reitman. May he rest in peace. Ivan Reitman is a uh, giant um, of comedies um, as in terms of a director. A uh, lot, a lot of classics under his belt. Um, and it was written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis. Stars Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. Um, Sigourney Weaver, Harold Ramis, Rick Moranis, Annie Potts, Ernie Hudson, uh, and a lot of other people from the eighties, but, um, but yeah, so (laughs) academics have, this movie has been, because it's been around for so long and it's been such a part of the cultural zeitgeist that it's been, uh, picked apart and analyzed for some reason. I don't know why this movie would be the one, but academics yeah. have called it a satire on academia, intellectuals, city government, yuppies, tax professionals, and apathetic New Yorkers. Um, the ghosts in the movie have been interpreted as analogs for crime, homelessness, pollution, and faltering infrastructure and public services. Um, an author by the name of Nicole Matthews <laughs> argued uh, the need to present the film targeted at both adults and children leads to the central characters being infantilized and immature. Uh, criticizing the movie, but regardless of what people say, Ghostbusters remains one of the most influential films of all time. It'll likely be in that cultural zeitgeist forever. Uh, the theme song was a hit. It The Halloween of 1984 was dominated by children dressed as the characters, and people to this day still dress up as the Ghostbusters on Halloween. Um, its reception has lasted well beyond its release, and it is considered one of the most important films, comedy films, ever made. What did you think, Marvin? Whew, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I might be disappointed a little. Um, no! I thought it was okay. Uh, this is the one. I knew it. I knew this was going to be it the was one. A, it was a fun movie. It's the last I the episode plot was good. of the Harsh Language Podcast. And the acting was great, but I didn't really think it was that funny, actually. I thought Rick Moranis or Moranis was the funniest thing to me alongside, like, some of the adult humor stuff mixed in with it still being a movie for kids. It's not a movie for kids, really. Yeah, well, it's... Pick rated PG was just like wow. Got to remember else. in the eighties the fucking the <laughs> rating system. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was before uh, old dude got his heart ripped out of his chest in Indiana Jones Part Two. Yep. Oh shit, that's the thing. That's funny. Uh, yeah. That's when it became PG thirteen. Yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. Uh, that's too much. <laughs> that's too <laughs> maybe, much. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's because I didn't see it originally, so I'm not affected at all by the nostalgia factor and mm-hmm. that a lot of people probably have and the attachment and growing up. Maybe even like dressing up as a fucking Ghostbuster for Halloween or some shit. Like, I'm kind of unaffected by all of that. Um, uh, real quick, I just did a little Jamie pull that up. Um, Ghostbusters was released June 8th, 1984. Mm-hmm. So it was obviously in production for longer than that. PG 13 wasn't introduced until July 1st, 1984. So a month later. Oh, they just, just barely. They yeah. just <laughs> barely got in under the wire for PG 13. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, All right. So you hated it, and our show's no, over. Okay. Cool. And, and the CG <laughs> effects, whatever, were also not great. Which again, I understand. It's one of those things. I'm sure it was great at the time, but I just don't have the same. A lot of it was practical, it Marvin. That's I what you got to appreciate. Yeah, I, I I do appreciate the practical stuff. I love the practical stuff, which I always like. I but, love the practical stuff and the thing. Well, I, I think love you the practical stuff in Star Wars. I don't. Like the CGI. Stuff. Well, there was just... no CGI. That's the thing. I think that's where you get a little confused from time to time because 
What okay. is CGI today? I'm not saying that in a bad way. What CGI today is just different technology, right? What is okay. CGI today is somebody on fucking like Blender, like making okay. graphics, like a video okay. game. And then it's rendered to high detail to look like it's as real as possible. That's fair. I think for, for a lot of normies, CGI, the term CGI is mm -hmm. interchangeable with fake. So what you're mistaking with, <laughs> yeah, for sure. What you're mistaking for CGI in these older movies, and yeah. one of the reasons why you like, would say like you disappointed with like a predator or this movie is that's still practical effects, but it's like, it's, it's, it's more of like, um, they're modifying the, uh, it's more like tricks of the frame. Like, I don't know if you noticed yeah. in ghostbusters and honestly tonight watching it was the, the first time I ever noticed it. But uh -huh. in the beginning, when you get that like down shot from above, um, the building mm -hmm. okay, and the gargoyle is in the foreground, you actually yeah, see yeah. the cars going through it. The gargoyle is a little transparent. I never noticed uh, that before. That's so, funny. So the way that is, that's not CGI like it would be today. That is literally like a still image just Modified placed, onto, placed the onto the film reel. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So that's see, like, why... I, I can get that and yeah. like, I just, I don't know. I just, that's okay. For me, I don't really, I don't really have the same appreciation for like the technical whatever yeah. went into that as much. Um, Maybe that's just a me thing, but... I'm sure there's other people that probably agree. You're from a different time. Um, yeah, I'm spoiled. This was, <laughs> the, I think, the highest grossing comedy until Home Alone came along. Yeah. I for me, know... see, for me, this was nowhere near as enjoyable as, like, Beverly Hills Cop or even The Thing or even, like, Star Wars, which is obviously, like, a whole different thing. But hmm. this well, the... wasn't as enjoyable for, just as, like, those three as an example. I could well. I mean, in terms of just effects, the thing is like revolutionary. Yeah, yeah. it like changed the game in terms of practical effects. Yeah, not and not just effects. I'm just saying. No, I know, I know, I know what you mean. A, a movie. I, um, I've, I've seen. Uh, I've seen, when did Honey I Shrunk the Kids come out? Was that 90s or was that 80s? I think it was the 90s. Because I love the first that one. Might have been late 80s, but it was probably early 90s. So late 80s. So they had a. Okay, so yeah. they had a, they had a several years. I yeah. mean. For me, something like that, I enjoyed more than Ghostbusters. Um, okay. So, yeah. I don't think I have a desire to watch this again. Interesting. I'll say that. The song is a banger, though. Um, <laughs> hey, listen. Rick Boston Moranis was good. fucking hilarious. Uh, so you don't... You, when you say you don't think it was funny, you didn't think... You don't think this I didn't think it was, was that funny. Interesting. No. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> comedy was kind of mid for the most part in this... See, I think what I said to introduce this, I think, th like, you're spoiled by that type of comedy. I think that's the difference. That's maybe. not true, because I enjoyed dry humor. Like, I enjoyed... Um, <sighs> I don't know if I would even call this dry. Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yeah. That's true. Well, that's different. I don't know. No, I'm saying it's not dry, but it's not, like, slapstick, or it's not, like, yeah, overly not sexual in your face. comedy. And you can't say that, because a lot of the, the comedy here was, like, that that sexual, like, he's fucking getting topped off by No, yeah, there's, there's definitely some and... sex humor, but what I say, like, if you watch a Seth Rogen movie, it's, like, all that it is. You know what I'm saying? It's, like, yeah. it's like all about yeah. that shit. That's yeah. only, like, they're, well, that, yeah, that's the difference. So, I guess to be more specific in Ghostbusters, really... What makes this movie what it is is not the story. It's not really the plot. It's really just these four guys and and their interactions. Yeah. Um, and like for me, I don't think a movie gets as filled with one liners as this one is. Um, yeah, no, that's fair. You know, like in the beginning when the fucking Caddyshack dean, probably Caddyshack too. Yeah, but when the <laughs> dean when the dean of the school is he says, Doctor Venkman, we believe that the purpose of science is to serve mankind. You, however, seem to regard science as some kind of dodge or hustle. Your theories yeah. are the worst kind of popular tripe. Your methods are sloppy, and your conclusions are highly questionable. You, Doctor Venkman, are a poor scientist. And he just goes, "I see." Like <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. I don't. No, that's good. <laughs> so, like that is. There's just so many moments like that, just like casual, like funniness. And a lot of it is like ad libbed. Like these guys, and I'm not, this isn't me trying to like sell you on it to make you rethink it. It's just, sure. Like these guys are, this is a movie that came out at the height of these guys' like careers. Like they are, they mm -hmm. are all comedy giants with the exception of, um, of, um, uh, Ernie Hudson. He was kind of just like a, like mm -hmm. a, a newcomer. Mm -hmm. And and honestly, never really had a, a much of a career after this, sadly. But mm -hmm. so this was actually originally written for um, uh, 
what's his name? Uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Um, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It was written Eddie for Eddie Murphy. It was written for Eddie Murphy and John Belushi. Um, and then it became what it became. But like, these are guys like these guys were comedy giants back then and they still are obviously and they yeah and like this was them at like the height of their fucking careers and just like i don't know i i just the the uh, the way that they just interact it just seems like effortless it's like they weren't even trying to be funny that's that's what really stands out to me every time i watch like these guys specifically not just in ghostbusters but a lot of their movies um i think it's what makes bill murray such like a fucking comedy icon is just the ease at which he like delivers gold but uh dusty get in there a little bit what what you got about this i know you love it too but <laughs> well yeah i mean that what's i think we do have a little bit of nostalgia bias because if i were maybe somebody like uh, Marvin's age, I could see how this film may not hit as some of the other ones do. I mean, it's a, I think it's a great film and it, yeah, worthy of being up there with goats. I'm going to give it a super high rating, but yeah, me too. <laughs> I can kind of see how some people might not be as interested in this particular flip. I think, um, I could definitely see how a movie like Beverly Hills Cop is more palatable for somebody who's younger um, because it doesn't have a lot of like special effects, you know? Yeah. Yep. Uh, but between the two movies, I do think Ghostbusters is funnier than Beverly Hills got personally. Hmm. Mm. Um, all right. What else do you want to rip apart about this movie? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> That's wild. I don't even think it's Bill Murray's funny. Is it, is it Bill Murray's funniest film? film it's rated if you want to look on imdb caddyshack might be his funniest film but. well on imdb 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 conveniently has a list of the best bill murray films and best goes by rating uh this is second to groundhog day yeah mm. um bill murray is funny in everything he is hilarious yeah. in caddyshack i still i think this is his funniest movie okay. i think it's either this or stripes yeah, Stripes is either. also hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. There's just there's just so much like I am the acorn that becomes the giant oak. Is there anything that you thought wasn't funny, Marvin, that you could think of off the top of your head where you were like, Well, that was supposed to be funny, but I didn't find it funny. Yeah, there's 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 actually several. I don't I would I I can't I can't pull them up off the top of my head. Okay. Uh the one like you said, I see, I didn't like bust out laughing or you didn't think that, that was funny at all no i maybe chuckled or like okay I, like i see the humor but it didn't make me just like kind of it's, bust it's not i so feel like for me like if i'm thinking of an 80s comedy that makes me bust out laughing it's like coming to america or like mm -hmm. um fucking uh what's another eddie murphy didn't miss back then Trading Places, which... Trading yeah. Places, Coming to America, Barely Hills Cop. I like, mean, those um, are both Eddie Murphy, so I'm like, I yeah. guess you see my... <laughs> oh, I see the bias, Marvin. <laughs> oh, I see. But no, um, I don't, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to look through a list to see, like, well, something when I, that like, I thought was, like, really funny. The I well, see... I mean, what, the, the Jerk was funny, right? He, was the like, Jerk was the... hilarious, yeah, but that wasn't yeah, that, like, was... what, what year was that? That Steve was, Martin. like, the 60s or some shit? 70s? Yeah, that was mid-late 70s. Oh, 79. Yeah. I thought the jerk was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. The, I, but that is more in your face to Dan's point, in your face type of like. Yeah. Right. I think a large, like the IC line that I brought up, that's not like funny. It's funny the way he delivers it. Yeah. That's what a lot of Ghostbusters has. It's it's about the delivery of these guys. And like, you know, another one when he, when they, when they take out Slimer in the, uh, in the hotel and Bill Murray's like, pricing out and he's like that was hilarious like, that's yeah. gonna cost you four big ones and then he's like we're, we're having a special <laughs> we're having a special this week on proton charging and storage of the beast like <laughs> the beast like you know that that was an ad lib line i know that wasn't yeah. written on the page and then <laughs> like at the end where where they're where they see stay puffed and like you know egon is like sorry vankman i'm terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought or, or his line when, you know, she's like hitting on him when, when uh, Melnitz is like hitting on him and she's like, do you have any hobbies? And he's like, I collect spores, molds, and fungus. <laughs> but you can <laughs> see how good. awkward yeah. he was. Like, <laughs> yeah, a lot of these things aren't really like, that's why I, I my intro was like, just purely funny. Like they are funny. So everything they say is going to be funny, whether it's yeah. 
whether it, the content is funny or not. And there is some things in the movie that are meant to be funny, but I think the large majority of it is funny because of them. So I guess like if, I don't know, I mean, have you, this is the first time you've watched Bill Murray in a movie? It can't be. Mm, I mean, I saw him in like Osmosis Jones. Oh God, no. So you haven't really seen a Bill Murray movie. And like you what said, else you, did I see him in? Uh, I don't know. He's done so many fucking movies. That might just be what it is. Maybe you're just not, you know. Maybe I'm not a Bill Murray fan. Well, right. Maybe like, well, no, I'm just saying like you've watched, you have a predisposition to um, other comedians of the era, right? So yep. maybe that's just what it is. Maybe you just haven't seen any, anything that you'd be like, oh, wow, Bill Murray's a funny dude. So you, I don't know. Yeah, Maybe that's what it is. Because that is a that is like a huge bulk of his humor. Is that is that just like it's just the way right. he he delivers stuff. Matter of fact, it's like Norm Macdonald. That's all about. Oh delivery. my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Norm Macdonald is somebody who nobody like. I don't think a normal person would be like, oh yeah, he's hilarious. But he actually is fucking hilarious. No, he's hilarious. He is hilarious. And right, and it's his delivery. Um, yeah, Eddie Murphy, I feel is just like a different type of funny. I don't really know how to even describe it, but. But no, I get you. I'm disappointed in you, but that's fine. <laughs> they have to be uh, one eventually. Huh? I'm so upset Otherwise, that this is Otherwise, I would one, just though. be like a fucking pushover. Why couldn't you hate Jaws or something? <laughs> How could I hate Jaws? No way. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, summer blockbuster. No you know, you, you know, you're see, you see, Marvin. Now I got to hit you with some more facts and knowledge. Uh oh. But Ghostbusters is considered one of the first blockbusters, along with Jaws. Oh shit. Mm hmm. Okay. Ghostbusters is credited with refining the term to effectively create a new genre that mixed comedy, science fiction, horror, and thrills. Um, yeah. Ghostbusters also is one of the first films that really proved that merchandising was not a fluke. Star Wars was the first oh, shit. really film to like merchandise, and yeah. this movie went on to do the same. Um, and it proved that That's like crazy a, that people thought that was a fluke. Fluke. That's, well, I mean, like hindsight, obviously, but yeah, like, it basically now it's everywhere and like just fucking toys, shirts, everything. But. Yeah, it just proved that like a successful, recognizable brand could launch spinoffs and you know launch business models and you know all yeah. sorts yeah. of shit. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, it launched the animated series and then um, the the second movie and then they got the the comic book run and people buy that shit, they buy toys, so. Yeah, a lot Easy of sale. a lot of people in the entertainment industry also credit Ghostbusters along with Saturday Night Live as like reversing the negative perception that New York City had in the early eighties. In the seventies, <laughs> New York City was like a fucking demilitarized zone, and <laughs> and um, th this is one of the things, believe it or not, that like started to like fix its reputation like um, jaws made people afraid to go in the water this yeah. made people not yeah. so much afraid of new, new york, york anymore safe again. well sigourney weaver yeah. said i think she's quoted saying i think it was a love letter to new york and new yorkers the doorman saying someone brought a cougar to a party that's just so new york um when we come down covered with marshmallow and there are these crowds of new yorkers of all types of descriptions cheering for us it was one of the most moving things i could remember um mm. And this movie also did a, a huge... None of this is to make you like it more, but it's, you know, you, you got to explain why it has such a lasting legacy. But it also helped um, bridge the divide between television and film actors, because at the time, it wasn't hmm. like it is now, where you could get, like, a fucking movie star in a fucking TV show and vice versa. It was, yeah. like, very much two very separate, like, industry things. Like, that person's a TV mm -hmm. star, this person's a movie star... Which is why Saturday Night Live is such a big deal in comedy because Saturday Night Live really like propelled these guys into like the stratosphere to become right. movie stars and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So that's a cool thing. Some of the greatest comedians and even spin off movies from the skits that they did. Oh, yeah. Blues Brothers and fucking there's tons of Saturday Night Live movies. Um, Night at the Roxbury's. Yeah. Night at the Roxbury is a great one. Uh, um, and uh yeah, I don't know. Just uh yeah, it's classic all around. I'm ah, I'm disappointed, Marvin. Yeah, I mean a lot I'm just like looking just... at the list of Bill Murray stuff. I haven't seen maybe five percent of this. Yeah. You know, so I mean, listen, that's fair. 
Um, what were you gonna say, Dusty? I was gonna say like Jaws. It's like a it's a buddy uh, group up movie. Except uh, you don't really get you don't really get the same intensity because it's it's ghosts and uh, the ghosts in the movie aren't necessarily as scary as they could have been. I mean, I guess some of them are if you're a kid, but some of them are <laughs> creepy. Librarian ghosts, yeah, like oh, she looks kind of scary, <laughs> but then they all survived. So you kind of listen. When I was a kid, this. are these really dangerous? When I was a kid, I was fucking terrified of Vigo from the second one. Yeah. <laughs> like even a little bit today, I'm still scared by that dude. Like he he was fucking scary. Uh but yeah, so um I don't know. What else is there to say? Bustin does not make Marvin feel good, I guess. That's No, uh, that song makes me feel great. <laughs> the song is fucking good. You don't get I mean, come on. Have you seen Afterlife, Marvin? Do we do that one? Uh-uh. No, no. He just sits here and, le- and listens to us fucking <laughs> Suck its dick all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know if I have a desire to like delve into like the Ghostbusters like mythology. Know. Yeah, I'm not as in is in, is in, uh, invested. I guess. Yeah, I think for based me, on my feelings of the first. I think for me, it's less about the mythology of the actual Ghostbusters. It's more about like the actors, really. Um, all of which are like beloved industry people. Um, like yeah. I grew up watching Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray just through my dad and stuff. And like Harold Ramis, um, one of my favorite directors, like I love all his movies. Um, Afterlife hit like kind of different because it's a revival of a franchise that's like beloved and and old. It's also a love letter to not just the Ghostbusters, but Harold Ramis, who was dead when that movie came out. There's also like the real life personal uh, beef that, happened between Harold Ramis and Bill Murray where they didn't speak for like 20 years up oh, until geez. like right before Harold Ramis died. So there's like a lot so of there's things. there's a lot of like legacy stuff that's like yeah. affecting it, it. Yeah. There's a lot of legacy stuff that elevates Afterlife to something that f- to be fair, Frozen Empire couldn't like recreate. Um, right. <laughs> but it's because it all stems from this movie really. Like, you know, and they work together a lot. They've worked on a lot of movies together, but this is the one, I think this is the one for me that if anybody's like, Hmm, what's a Bill Murray movie I should watch? What's a Harold Ramis movie? Would what, what, you know, it's Ghostbusters. What else would it be? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. uh, it's a great one. Did you have a favorite scene, Marvin? What'd you like about it? What's what? Tell me something that you did like. Yeah. No, like I said, it was funny. No, um, I, mean, I didn't hate it, but uh, my favorite scene, let me think here. My favorite scene, probably when uh, he goes back to Sigourney Weaver's character and she's she has become possessed and she's like, Azul. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's like, uh, rule number one or something like, or something he's like, don't get seduced by, or don't, I forgot what he said. Basically, don't have sex with someone that's possessed or something like that. And the way he said it was just so funny. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's probably my favorite scene. <laughs> I'm just thinking that. It's like, there's so many one-liners in this movie where it's like, yeah. you know, are you yeah. a god? No. Hey, <laughs> if somebody asks if you're a god, yeah, just that say was good. yes. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. Or when he tells him to get him, which is a callback to Dude, the scene from the library. <laughs> that's actually my favorite line in the yes. whole fucking movie where he's yes. like... Where she, <laughs> which one? At the end, where where Gozer first well, in appears. the beginning when they're in the library and they're not sure what to do, he's like, "All right, follow me. We're gonna do this." And he's like, "Get him!" Yeah, but <laughs> and then the, the ghost like storms him at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah He yeah, says yeah. it back to him. He's, oh, okay, okay. Go get her, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fun. that's that's actually like one of my favorite lines in the whole movie. Yeah. That and 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 Marvin was you know saying how funny Rick Moranis was. Rick Moranis is fucking hilarious. He was, he mm-hmm. was the one where he was just talking and I was just cracking up. That was the one. Like how you probably feel about Bill Murray and the other guys is how I felt about Rick Moranis. Because he's just <laughs> yeah. and he's spilling everybody's fucking business about because he just he's like the tax accountant. I'm assuming. Oh yeah. And he does everyone's taxes <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. building. And he's like <laughs> he just, talking about the guy like yeah they only got twelve thousand left eight percent they're doing well and I'm like this dude is fucking hilarious. <laughs> When he becomes Vince Clortho, though, and he's talking to the horse, and he's like, this shit is fucking hilarious. <laughs> all slaves will be yeah. freed, or whatever. Yeah. All, our, all our prisoners will be freed. Look for the sign. Yeah. I was like, he's fucking good. He's like, have some coffee. He's like, the pizza. Do like, I want coffee? He's like, yes, have some. <laughs> yes, have some. 
<laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, and yeah. then when it's like, uh, when they showed them at the top of the tower, and it's like they clearly like just had sex or something, like the way they're both disheveled. In oh, a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember that. It's like that shit mm-hmm. was like a little funny thing, too. Yeah, they have sex. Because he's been wanting to get with her for all this time. And he, the way he finally gets with her is oh, after yeah. they're both possessed. possessed. I thought that right. was hilarious. <laughs> um, so just since you probably will never watch it, Afterlife picks up on the mythology of this one okay. and basically explains that Egon discovered that like um there's like way more to yeah the Evo, guy who built that building that Evo was Shandor the, who made this building yeah. oh yeah I remember them talking about it briefly yeah he had like a mine in Oklahoma which is where afterlife takes place and like that's where he was mining all like the rare metals that can harness psychokinetic energy okay and he had like a fail safe. And basically you find out that Gozer could be summoned like every 30 years or whatever. Yeah. And and so he became a loner, Egon, in his last years on this farm in Oklahoma, trying to like prevent the end of the world. And like nobody believed and oh, they all shit. move on. Yeah. After the second one, the second one starts, they've been like the mayor basically fucks them over after this first one. Like he get he uses them at the end of this to like, do whatever for re-election purposes. And then he like fucks them over. They don't get paid for the job and all this stuff. So the second one starts, they're all like broke and like doing their own things and shit. They're getting sued by everybody. They're getting sued left and right by everybody in the city. And then there's like another issue, but where afterlife takes place 30 years later, afterlife. One of the great things about afterlife is that like the events of what happened in this one almost became like myth and legend because it's, 30, 40 years later. So it'd be like, you know, my dad being like, Hey, when I was a kid, there was like ghosts that fuck. And I'd be like, yeah, whatever dad. So it's like, (laughs) it's not something that is like widely known or like people just forgot it happened, which is Mm. funny to think because I mean, a lot of it is like, like, if this really happened, like people on TV would be like, yeah, it's fucking fake. There'd be like so many Walter Peck out there. I'd be a Walter Peck. Basically. I'd be like, nah, these guys are fucking fake. They're, they're grifters and all this shit. So, well, I thought that was actually a, a really clever method for them to do the plot of releasing the ghosts. Cause he was like from the EPA was yeah, like yeah, the environmental, environmental yeah. protection agency or whatever. Yep, yep. So I thought that was a pretty clever way to, uh, to yeah. have like a plot thing or whatever, whatever it's called. A MacGuffin. <laughs> no, that's what it's called. What, a, what's a, a MacGuffin? A MacGuffin is just a plot device that is used to, oh. to, it, it's usually an object. So like, okay. It's meant to um, keep the plot in motion, but it doesn't really have any importance. So yeah. I guess the MacGuffin in this would be, uh, just, um, I don't know, the, well, no, not really. I was going to say the container. I thought it was pretty here, fitting. But, yeah. No, it is. Yeah, for sure. But that would, that would like. It wasn't like force or all. It was pretty natural. Like yeah. these guys are capturing ghosts and nobody is questioning them about it. I also yeah. really love the prison I, well, scene. I have a, I have a, a dusty gripe with that mm-hmm. oh let's hear it which he already might know what it is which is did they not already account for the power being cut off at some point and the fucking goes were generators a thing yet it's actually yeah. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned because it it's actually addressed in frozen empire oh that's funny okay it's like one of the main plot points of frozen empire that the containment unit at this point being packed with ghosts for 30 years is like on the brink, like about to explode and it's not uh, okay. functioning properly. Oh, uh, um, okay. Okay. That's pretty good. I like but, that. Maybe yeah. I will watch them. I mean, I actually enjoy the plot of busting ghosts and fucking ghost extermination. So I feel like maybe it's one of those movies that is so hyped up for you. Yeah. Being somebody who sure. hasn't yeah. watched it and, and you know, you pe- Anybody, you seen Ghostbusters? No. What the fuck? You've never seen Ghostbusters? Like, <laughs> it's one of those movies that probably by the time you watch it, you're like, all right, I get why people like it, but eh. Yeah, I don't know. I think Marvin will probably like Afterlife better because he doesn't have the nostalgia of knowing yeah. who all those actors are or That's watching it the original time, not having to watch dated. I do think know, Afterlife works. Ha- like for both audiences, like people who have not no familiarity with Ghostbusters mm-hmm. and people who do, it obviously leans way heavier towards fans. But 
I think yeah. it would work for new audiences too. You should watch the second one though. I think the second one's I, I like the second one. People hated it back then because it was like a cheap rehash of the first one. Oh, okay. But yeah. I, I like the second one just as much as the first. Cause like I said, with frozen empire, like give me the chance to watch all these guys on screen together. Like I will yeah. take that chance every time. Like it doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just one last thing. I just want to say the prison scene, also one of my favorites too. I, I like that little conversation and all the, the people in the cage are like, kind of like <laughs> eavesdropping. <laughs> And then, they're in on the plan, yeah. But then, yeah, he, like but, then but when when fucking uh, Egon is like explaining, and he's like, after the first world war, Evo Shandor thought the world was too sick to continue, and he just he just starts looking around <laughs> at the the fucking the cell with all the fucking inmates. <laughs> but then like, I didn't realize that. That's pretty. Funny. You never noticed that? No. <laughs> yeah, he says Evo Shandor after the first world war, he thought that the world was too sick to go no, on. I I noticed that I'm saying the looking around. Oh like, yeah, he like leans back and <laughs> the then he just prisoners. yeah, he's like looking around at all the all the prisoners. <laughs> yeah, um, that's funny. And then Bill Murray at the end is like, "I gotta go. Got to mat the the mayor wants to rap at me about some stuff." <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know. It's just like I don't see. I, I don't know. It's two different perspectives. Like I I can't not laugh when Bill Murray speaks. He said some of the yeah. most like unfunny shit in Frozen Empire, but I was still giggling just because it's like Bill Murray saying it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, Marvin hated Ghostbusters. Stay you heard, <laughs> you heard it. it here first, folks. Didn't hate it. <laughs> no, I know. I know. <laughs> um, well, it's got a 7.8 on IMDb, Marvin. Uh, it's got a long lasting legacy. Uh, it's 7.8. I got to bump it up. This is, this is, I mean, it's really it's just 10 out of 10 for me. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. It is. It is what it is, you know? This is uh this is probably it's probably seven seven point five for me. Okay. That's good. I mean, so you're sitting here acting like you hated it. You never said I hated it. Not once. You said you didn't find it funny. That's how you took it. Yeah, I said uh, I didn't think it was that funny. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Can we just real quick, what's your what's your rating, Dusty? Uh, I give it a nine. <laughs> okay, not going for the ten because yeah. you refuse. never. He's going. He's never. Going never. For the 10. Never. Will. He's got to stick to it at this point. Did anybody but me catch Winston towards the end when they're fighting Gozer, and he says this job isn't worth eleven five a year. This <laughs> motherfucker is making eleven thousand five hundred dollars a year. Oh my god! Yeah. That's like, there's no way that was an average salary in the eighties. <laughs> right. There's just no way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm, I'm sure it is. That inflation was pretty I don't bad. Know how too he's in living the late on that in New York, though. 80s. Let's see. Prices and wages by decade. 19. Coming off. Ni- from 1980 to 1989. Why can't I see? What the fuck kind of fucking bullshit ass website is this? Like, just give me the goddamn information. What was the average salary? Holy fuck, dude. In 1984, the average individual income increased to $15,200. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, minimum wage in the 80s was, well, in 1980 was $3.10 an hour. Dude, in 1970. Okay, so I found this. In 1990, <laughs> in New York City specifically, the average New Yorker was earning $34,300. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, you could buy Fucking leaded York. gasoline for eighty-seven cents a gallon. So this man That's was making nuts. fucking eleven thousand five hundred dollars a year. That's <laughs> nuts. No way. <laughs> what was rent like? Twenty dollars? Like I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, Lord. yeah. Uh, Moranis, his character said it. I was saying before the guy he's got twelve. He's got twelve thousand left on his mortgage at an eight percent rate. So I mean, bro, that uh, was central. Houses, that building was Central House Park was like, West. That's true. That's where millionaires live. <laughs> Her apartment now is probably like $18 million. Right. Yeah, no, straight up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that shit is crazy. It is. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, okay. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. You just didn't find it as it. funny as we hyped it up to be. That's fair. Yes. Yep. Not just you guys, the world. No, yeah, the world. It's a, It's mm-hmm. like it's one of the most hyped movies of all time. That's what I'm saying. Yep. Yep. You don't see the hype. I get it. No big deal. <laughs> uh, God, there's so many one-liners. They're all just racing through my head. Like, <laughs> they fuck, He's like, hold on, hold on. I always want to do this. 
and the flowers are still standing. <laughs> <laughs> fucking everything just fucking yeah. flew off of it. <laughs> or oh, when they fucking blast the fucking uh, the housekeeper of the hotel and Bill Murray's like, sorry, we thought you were somebody else. Yeah, like, <laughs> like what the fuck? That's what's so funny. <laughs> There's the roaches with the guy. He's like, there must be one hell of a roach. She's like, take your head off, man. Oh, bite your head <laughs> off, man. <laughs> bite your yeah. damn head off, yeah. Bill Murray is just, yeah, he's a classic. In fact, funny Bill Murray story, he's famously difficult to work with. And for this movie, they didn't even know he was going to agree to do the movie until the day they started shooting. He just, like, showed up to set. Jesus. Yeah. Fucking how do you plan for that? Oh, well, that's why, I mean, listen, he's famously hard to work with, and him and Harold didn't talk for, like, 20 years. After they, they had Damn. some beef on uh, Groundhog Day, and then they didn't speak for a really long time. Um, unfortunate. Yeah. That is unfortunate. But, uh, yeah. All right. Well, comedy legends, legendary movie. I hope you watch the second one. You should watch the second one. It's very funny. I think I will. Vigo is fucking scary, man. And I want to see uh, Finn's character. He's in the second one, right? Finn. uh, Finn Wolfhard? He's in Afterlife. He's in Afterlife. Oh, you're saying the second one, like, 1989. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to watch Afterlife, you might as well watch the second one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Real quick, before we wrap it up, all right, let's see. Dusty, this is more of a me and Dusty question. I want us to pick two things. Since they're both no longer with us, if you had to pick one other Harold Ramis movie, either that he directed or was in for Marvin to watch, what would you choose? Uh, fuck, I don't know. I'd have to, oh my gosh. Um, I can go through some of his stuff that he directed and wrote. Oh, man. Uh, Stripes is a really good one. He he wrote Stripes, but he directed Caddyshack. He directed the original oh, wow. Vacation. He directed Groundhog oh, Day. Wow. He directed Multiplicity with Michael Keaton. He directed Analyze This. Hmm. He directed Bedazzled. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. He, he directed Analyze That. And then his the last movie he directed was uh, Year One. Yeah, I don't know. I would, like, his old comedy was oh, yeah. amazing. As a writer, whew, man, the credits are insane. Yeah. Caddyshack. Meatballs, Caddyshack, yeah. Stripes, Ghostbusters, Back to School, Fucking Armed and Dangerous, which is not a well-rated movie, but I think it's funny with John Candy. Um, he wrote uh, Caddyshack. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, obviously, Ghostbusters too, and Groundhog Day. I'm going with Groundhog Day for Mar- if that. That's if I had to pick a Harold Ramis movie, it's Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day is amazing. And I would double that yeah. for if I had to pick a Bill Murray movie for Marvin to watch. <laughs> Maybe we got to make Marvin watch Groundhog Day. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen it. I haven't seen list. any of these Harold Ramis movies oh, or whatever. Goodness. I haven't even seen Caddyshack. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Now I just don't think you'll find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh... And for Ivan Reitman, if I had to pick, it would be... Um, He's got so many fucking movies, dude. Like, it's crazy. Um, but if I had to pick an Ivan Reitman movie for Marvin to watch, it would be... Um, oh, what the fuck is it called? It's on the tip of my tongue. Come on. Dave. Have you seen Dave, Dusty? Yes. Political movie? Where he look, he's, he, he's hired as a lookalike to be the president. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds That's funny. a good one. It's... Not just funny, it's one of the most heartwarming movies I think I've ever seen in my life. It's with Kevin oh, wow. Klein and Sigourney Weaver. She plays the first lady. Basically, the, the real president goes into like a coma, and this guy, Kev, Kevin Klein, plays both the president and this dude they find. Like the staff of the White House find this guy who looks enough like the president that he could pose as the president in public so they don't have to tell the public that the president's in a coma. Yeah. But the president's a piece of shit. And the guy that Dave, who they get to play the president, is like 
just a super nice guy. Like a, he does like he he comes yeah. in and like does all this like progressive shit that like helps the people. Oh my god! Oh fuck! It's <laughs> such a fucking good movie. Love it. I think Evolution is underrated. I Evolution is one. also he does, amazing. He does a lot of the Schwarzenegger stuff too. That's also funny. Like Twins is great. Yeah, he did Twins. He did fucking Kindergarten Cop. Ivan Reitman's mm-hmm. like a fucking legend, man. Like he he did Hitchcock, like that movie that the yeah. Like he, he's, um, he's got Hitchcock? like, that, uh, that's, uh, he, he produced was, Hitchcock. It's a movie about Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Paul Rudd was holding up the cannibal girls tape. Yeah. When they were mm-hmm. like, let's do a movie night. <laughs> yep. Yep. And that was, uh, that was his, that was, that was right one of his here. first movies that he did. Yep. Um, we're talking about in. In Frozen Empire, Paul Rudd, they're living in the firehouse. So that's like a huge part of the movie. Now you get the context for it. It's like you see the family living in the firehouse. Ivan Reitman, one of his first movies was this like horror movie called Cannibal Girls. In Frozen Empire, they're having like a movie night in the firehouse and Paul Rudd's got Cannibal Girls. It's like a little Easter egg. Oh, nice. Yeah. Have you seen Meatballs, Marvin? Come on. That's another great mm. fucking <laughs> Ivan Reitman, Bill Murray thing. Mm-hmm. Balls. It's, nah. like a, it's like a summer camp movie. There's a lot of 80s comedies that are like summer focused, like summer activities. Meatballs, fucking. Yeah. Um, That's when people were going. Uh, when did they come out? In summer, the summer School too, is a great 80s movie. Mm-hmm. What's the one with John Candy? Summer Rental. Remember, do you remember yeah, that summer one? Summer Rental, yeah. With the uh, bear. Yeah. yeah. No, no. That's. <laughs> no, no. That's. Um, that's um uh the great outdoors. Oh, Some, that is the great outdoors. You're summer right. rentals, yes. the one where he goes to the beach house with his family, and he's like gets yes. the horrific sunburn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, fuck. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. We just gushed about the Ghostbusters for long enough. Let us know what you think about the Ghostbusters. Leave a comment down below. Tell Marvin why he's fucking crazy. Yeah, uh, please. <laughs> tell us what you thought about Frozen Empire if you went and saw it. Um, remember you could get in touch with us on Twitter or any of our socials you just go to our website harshlanguage.tv to find all of our links leave a like on the video and subscribe if you have not done so already uh, we will be back next week we don't know what we're watching next week uh, but be sure to check back with us yep thank you for watching or listening we will catch you next time see ya hasta <laughs>